Good morning, it's March 22 and I am at the neatest state park in New Mexico. It's called City of Rocks. And I think you can tell behind me how very special it is. I got here yesterday and I went for a walk around the, the path that they have, but it was so windy, just brutal windy to record. So now I'm hoping that this morning is a bit better and I can get a talk in. I'm taking you on the Hydra Hike and Bike Trail. This is the Chihuahuan Desert, and it's only in New Mexico and then all the way into Mexico, um, up to Mexico City, apparently. There's a lot of birds in this park. God had Moses meet him again in the morning on top of Mount Sinai with the tables of stone hewn by himself because he had smashed the first set of tables. Then the Lord descended in the cloud and passed before Moses, saying, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. The name of the Lord stands for his character, here described in three fundamental qualities, mercy, justice, and truth. Greatest emphasis is placed upon mercy because God's relationship to us is based upon that. It was particularly important at this time when God's divine favor had been forfeited, when the Israelites chose to worship a gold calf instead of him. I mean, can you imagine how insulting that must have been to God? But divine favor was restored because of his mercy. I just love the prairie sky. There are six different ways in which Jesus manifests his love for his people. He is merciful and gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, and forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin. A more complete declaration of his regard and love for sinners would be difficult to imagine. When the Lord revealed himself to Moses in the burning bush, he declared himself to be the I am, or the self-existent one, thus declaring a distinct difference between him and all other gods. In the present state of Israel's sorrow and subdued spirit, something additional was needed to impart hope and assurance. Of itself, the law could not be merciful and gracious. Its sole purpose was upon rectitude. In the revelation of the character of God to Moses, Sinai not only proclaims the divine law, but divine grace. This fact proves unfounded the popular notion that Sinai stands for justice, but not mercy. Do you see it? I've heard so many people say that after the cross we are now under grace. But grace was shown in the Old Testament too. Okay, this is the trail I'm really after. Table Mountain Trail. We've got a climb ahead of us. But God proclaiming his grace on Mount Sinai by no means annulled the law or thwarted divine justice. Rather, it clarified the relationship of each to the other. It is this same unchanging character of God that gives us poor, helpless sinners hope of eternal life today. And so remember that God is mercy and justice and truth. Inasmuch as there can be no trust in one who is not true, God qualifies for our trust by being abundant in truth. 
Truth lies at the root of moral character. It is precise opposite of hypocrisy. God's justice is an essential part of his nature, no less than his mercy. Without it, God could not be God. Although we read in the Bible that God delights in mercy, we never read in the scriptures that God delights in bringing judgment upon men. On the contrary, his judgments are said to be a strange work. Boulder hopping. Got a different view. Tremendous. It is God's mercy that moderates his judgments and makes him long-suffering. When the Lord must punish us for our sins, he does it in love, for our own good, not in anger. Like the surgeon, God uses the cutting knife of sorrow to effect the healing of the soul's disease or injury that has resulted from sin. Probably don't want to be stepping on those guys. And that's where I was. And now I'm going to take you into the city. I mean, look at this interesting rock. Pretty cool. Wouldn't this make a fun camping spot? Isn't this just so neat? And other having to battle for the wind for my talk, it's a five out of five. And it was a six mile trek. I found a peaceful spot. So how many of you want God's justice with his mercy? I do. This world needs his justice done. Otherwise evil will take over and totally control it. 
But thank you, Jesus, for your love and mercy.